Tonight's honoree has been a tireless champion of change and a voice for the voiceless. Jesse Williams. is the essence of a modern civil rights legend in the making and a true pioneer of our new generation of leaders. Many of you know him for his role as the very handsome Dr. Jackson Avery they know, on the hit series Grey's Anatomy. But outside of TV, Jesse's role in life is that of someone tirelessly committed to becoming the booming voice of modern day community activism. <laughs> While some celebrities find time to lend their voices and names to various campaigns in support of for a very short moment, Jesse planted roots into the cause, standing shoulder to shoulder with the community in Ferguson and becoming a champion for so many other causes. Knowledge is power. It is an incredibly necessary tool for self-determination. You know, I was lucky enough to have parents who were very politically conscious when I was able to read and my dad first sat me down and made it very clear to me the burden that we bear uh, as black people in this country and how many people fought and died and uh, sacrificed their time and energy to be able to have access to possibly pursuing any dreams that we have. When you think about his voice in the black community, you need to understand that before he was an actor, he was a teacher. He taught on African diaspora and African history. Being a teacher certainly impacted the work that I do. I come from a community very similar to that which I was that which I was teaching in, right? So an understanding of what it is to live below the poverty line. I never had any interest in acting until I started doing it. Getting the role on Grey certainly turned into a life-changing um, opportunity. Uh, didn't know it at the time, but lucky for me, I think they made some kind of accounting error and just kept me on the books and I, and I stuck around. I think anybody who achieves celebrity means that you have captured the imagination of a vast public. For those of us who have had that experience, great challenge then becomes, what do you do with that platform? Is it okay to use violence to get what you want or not? Because a cop blew the head off of Michael Brown, shot a teenager six times, but Michael Brown's the savage because he pushed a guy in a convenience store? And Jesse not only spoke out about the brutal murder of unarmed teen Mike Brown, he traveled to Ferguson to stand in solidarity with the people on the front line. Ferguson decided to take the mantle of being ground zero for how we're going to organize resistance and to respect ourselves enough to stand upright and not be bent over anymore and to harness this energy. Um, that's where the work was being done. Jesse chose to use his power and his platform to put a light on things that people would not ordinarily expect him to speak about. He is amazingly conscientious about the world in which he lives. He understands that the condition of the people is the condition. And if it is less than what it needs to be, then people who have the platform need to stand up and speak uh, unapologetically. In addition to speaking out and protesting in places like Ferguson and Flint, Jesse pushes for social change through his media project, Question Bridge Black Males, and his service on the boards of the Advancement Project and Sankofa.org. Jesse, doing what he does, he says it's worth it. It's a chance worth taking. Black Lives Matter means to me we are no longer going to allow you to pretend we are somehow subhuman. We're not interested in conditional freedom. We want the freedom that we damn well deserve and we want it right now. For his continued efforts and steadfast commitment to furthering social change, we are proud to present such a deserving recipient with the 2016 BET Humanitarian Award presented by State Farm. Jesse Williams.
Peace, peace. Thank you, Deborah. Thank you, BT. Uh, thank you, Nate Parker, Harry, um, and, and Debbie Allen uh, for participating in that. Um, before we get into it, I just want to say, you know, I brought my parents out tonight. I just want to thank them uh, for being here, for teaching me um, to focus on comprehension over career, that uh, they make sure I learn what the schools were afraid to teach us, and also to thank my amazing wife for changing my life. Now, this award... This is not for me, this is for the real organizers all over the country, the activists, the civil rights attorneys, the struggling parents, the families, the teachers, the students that are realizing that a system built to divide and impoverish and destroy us cannot stand if we do. Mm. All right? It's kind of basic mathematics. The more we learn about who we are and how we got here, the more we will mobilize. Now, this is also in particular for the black women in particular, who have spent their lifetimes dedicated to nurturing everyone before themselves, we can and will do better for you. Now, what we've been doing is looking at the data, and we know that police somehow manage to de-escalate, disarm, and not kill white people every day. So what's going to happen is we are going to have equal rights and justice in our own country, or we will restructure their function and ours. Mm. Now, I got more y'all. Yesterday would have been young Tamir Rice's 14th birthday. So I don't want to hear any more about how far we've come when paid public servants can pull a drive-by and a 12-year-old playing alone in a park in broad daylight, killing him on television and then going home to make a sandwich. Tell Rakia Boyd how it's so much better to live in 2012 than it is to live in 1612 or 1712. Tell that to Eric Garner. Tell that to Sandra Bland. Tell that to Dorian Hunt. Now, the thing is, though, all of us in here getting money, that alone isn't going to stop this. All right? Now, dedicating our lives, dedicating our lives to getting money just to give it right back for someone's brand on our body, when we spent centuries praying with brands on our bodies, mm -hmm. and now we pray to get paid mm. for brands on our bodies. Mm. There has been no war that we have not fought and died on the front lines of. There has been no job we haven't done. There's no tax they haven't levied against us, and we've paid all of them. But freedom is somehow always conditional here. You're free, they keep telling us. But she, she, she would have been alive if she hadn't acted so free. free. Mm. Now, freedom is always coming in the hereafter. But you know what, though? The hereafter is a hustle. We want it now. And let's get, let's get a couple things straight. Just a little side note. The burden of the brutalized is not to comfort the bystander. That's not our job. All right, stop with all that. If you have a critique for the resistance, for our resistance, then you better have an established record of critique of our oppression. Mm. If you have no interest, if you have no interest in equal rights for black people, then do not make suggestions to those who do. Sit down. That's right. We've been floating this country on credit for centuries, yo. And we're done watching and waiting while this invention called whiteness uses and abuses us, burying mm. black people out of sight and out of mind while extracting our culture, our dollars, our entertainment like oil, black gold, ghettoizing and demeaning our creations, then stealing them, gentrifying our genius, and then trying us on like costumes before discarding our bodies like rinds of strange fruit. Mm. The thing is, though, the thing is that just because we're magic doesn't mean we're not real. Mm. Thank you. Woo! Now to the people, young Jesse. I'm Enio. I'm Tammy Crawford.